Now we have had Leslie on this channel during the Women in Translation Month to get her view from a female perspective. This month I wanted to flip the script a little bit and talk to her about the male view a little bit and one of Kurt Vonnegut's unpublished story finally surfing for us to read today. Welcome Leslie. Hello. What up nerds? <laughs> Welcome to the Codex Cantina where I am Una. And I am the Queen Bee Leslie. <laughs> Now, we take some of the most important literature that has influenced even today's authors. If you're down for a conversational approach to literature, hit that subscribe button to join us on the journey. Guys, today, The Drone King, which Una and I both read in our beautiful copy of Kurt Vonnegut's Complete Stories. First of all, this book is absolutely gorgeous. I've only read the one story so far. I'm very excited to keep reading it. But The Drone King was never published. It was written in the 1950s. It finally showed up in October of 2017. And we will leave a link to The Atlantic down below where you can read for free, as well as an audiobook abridged version. It's a pretty cool animation. It'll kind of whet your appetite, but it is not the whole story, but we'll leave a link down below where you can experience that. Now, Kurt Vonnegut is one of my favorite authors and something Leslie has been getting more into as she does a ton of sci-fi as well, but he also has that literary angle where it's really useful to kind of talk through his stories. Yeah, I, Kurt Vonnegut is an, an author I would call a hybrid author. While he does fall into the sci-fi genre, I also feel that he is very much at home in the literary fiction genre as well. And I love when you get those different genres mixed in with one another. He's so effortless in his mm. writing. This yeah. is my second piece to read by him. Slaughterhouse Five was the first. And I love Slaughterhouse Five. But it's written in a completely different manner than what the short story is. And I can tell you guys... After reading this first short story, I can't wait to dig into more. I love the way he writes. It's so conversational. It's almost like someone is sitting there telling you the story. It's easy to follow, easy to read and enjoy and understand, which that's very important to me, especially when it comes to science fiction. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Now, when it comes to Kurt Vonnegut himself, he is such an interesting author for where he's positioned. He, he came in right at the tail end as short stories kind of to fade out, kind of replaced by TV programs in a sense. But he was also kind of serving in the war, coming back from war and saying, what's my place in life now? There's tons of American authors from this era that became very popular. What's interesting about Vonnegut's tale is he comes from an era where men came first, women came second. They were kind of always silent, not spoken to, that sort of thing. Not saying it's right, but that's, that's the generation that he came to. And when he came back from the war, where men did all the work, women stayed at home and tended to the family and raised the kids, well, when we were at war, well, the women went to work, right? The men went off to, to fight the war. The women helped provide the supplies and keep the country running. Well, now the men come back, and all of a sudden, all of these writers, all these people of this era are reevaluating What's the purpose of my life? You know, a lot of women said, we like working. We want to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. And it became a, a movement of, of women's rights, very, very rightfully so for people to push for what they think makes them happy. And at well, the same time... I believe, I believe what happened there is women felt like they had some worth. Mm -hmm. And that is very, very just liberating. And it feels good to know that you have value more than just being someone who's stuck in a house, keeping house. Right, right. And I think, you know, last month with Women's in Translation, we covered a couple of those stories exploring those angles, and they're very, very important. Something that is kind of looked down upon, I feel like, is when you, were, when you flip the script and you talk about, well, what are some things that, that men don't have rights to? And some say, you know, suck it up. Don't cry about it. You know, you've got everything else mm -hmm. that's so good. Don't worry about these bad things, you know. And men tend to bottle things up. They tend to not share some things. And what's so great about Vonnegut's writing is that we get to explore perhaps some of these things and experiences that men go through that when they come back from this war and they realize they're not the only ones that can do work, that, that women are just as good at working on a lot of things the same way that they are. Well, now what's my point in life? And what do I do when what used to be something that only men can do, now both men and women can do? What is my point in life? In the same way that women found value, men were like, well, now, what do I do now, I guess, in a sense? I felt so bad 
from that aspect because they were no longer needed by their country at this point. They've always usually had a commanding officer that said, do this, do this, do this. So they didn't really have to do, thought wasn't required. They just did what they were told. Mm -hmm. They performed their job. And I think they held on to, you know, when this is over, I get to go home and go back to my normal routine, the way life was before the war. And hopefully getting back to that routine would make them forget the awfulness of the war. And then they get home and women are like, we don't need you. We, we got this. And <laughs> I'm not going to give up my job. Women were also playing professional sports while the men were gone to war. That whole thing got started. And I, unfortunately, I just don't think the women were feeling liberated. And I don't think they saw it from the men's perspectives. They just, the men wanted to feel needed and they didn't feel like they had a place. Women were taking care of things. The country was not needing them, and I think that just left them in a very bad situation. Right. Let's do a quick plot recap. I don't think this is, while the plot is fascinating and very enjoyable, the recap of the plot will be very short because I think you just need to read this to fully get the enjoyment out of it. But just as a quick summary, basically our narrator is a stock and bond advisor and is called to a Millennium Club one day, a lavish escape by the fallen millionaire Sheldon Quick. And there Sheldon Quick kind of drops it on him like, hey, buddy, I'm going to toss you a bunch of money. All you got to do is help me with my business plan, which involves using bees as communication. And it's like, what? <laughs> this absolutely ludicrous idea of taking tiny little messages, just like we used to use carrier pigeons, and attach them to these little insects. Why would you do that? Sheldon Quick, we learn very quickly, has a very different view on women. He's almost misogynistic or anti-woman. Uh, more so than he is pro-man, is one way to view this character. And he's trying to find value in these male bees that are killed and slaughtered. And he brings up all of these examples in nature about how tarantulas do it, how praying mantises do it. And these, these are true things. The animal kingdom really does behave this way, where the men are discarded once their use has been given. And so he's trying to re-give a use to these men, give them a bee millennium club to send communications. And they're so much better than carrier pigeons, right? They can go through windows. They can fly indoors. All they got to do is go beehive to beehive. So he calls together the press conference, opens the door for them to fly, you know, three stories to the other millennium club beehive. And what happens as soon as he opens that door, Leslie? Well... Unfortunately, as nature tends to do, it reverts back to the way things were, and they go right back to the queen bee. And they go right back to getting slaughtered, right? So yep. very depressing and sad story, I guess, but it's also very liberating and thought-provoking, as many of Vonnegut's works are. Let's move into our discussion and analysis here. So first of all, I think we've kind of set a lot of groundwork with that opening discussion there, right? We talk about how there clearly is a discussion of what is the use of men in society in a sense, right? We open up with men being segregated off in this millennium club, which were real things. And uh, I think if I remember correctly, when I toured uh, one downtown, the Skyline Club, when I was running a business and you know networking and stuff like that, uh, it, it's open to women too, of course now. But they talked about how they think, if I remember correctly, the, the Bonnegats were uh, a member of that club too that or they were lying or am i mis misremembering i don't remember but it, it was men only at one point in time this is where men can escape and have that uh, freedom to discuss things quote unquote that sort of thing but very clearly this is kind of like that that symbol that that setting of the line between men and women and this is the man space is one of the ways to view the opening of so, the story when mr quick began the story with the whole slap in the face where the female, the, the queen bee kills the male drone. And then when you further read in the story, when he releases the bees at the press conference and they go back to the queen and they get slaughtered. That was, that was so sad when he described those male drones just getting battered and killed. I could picture that. And I, I felt so bad. I mean, I know it's nature. I know it's designed that way for a purpose, but I didn't understand. It just, it feels so mean. 
And then mm -hmm. when you think about what it's used to represent in this story, how men had one use and then were discarded, I felt so bad about it. Well, we, we have this quote too, where they say, this wholesale slaughter of the males takes place after the males have performed the most basic function. What are your thoughts on that? So think back. Last month, we covered A Chicken by Clarice Lispector. And if you will remember, that story was about a chicken mm -hmm. who had one job, and that was to feed the family by being a meal. Mm -hmm. And we find that the author is comparing it to how women were viewed or treated. They had one purpose, and that was to be in the home, provide for the family, and that was that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like this is the same story, but from the male perspective. And right. dare I say it, I actually like this one better. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Vonnegut really made me feel emotion when reading about the story. I felt so bad for any man who has been made to feel this way, feel like they no longer had a purpose. They had their, you know, they felt like they had one job. And once that one job was over, they were used up. They were not, the only thing that was good to happen at that point was to, to kill them off, to murder them. It just, it really made me feel emotion. Right. Well, it's so interesting for our society today because it's not just a man problem. It's not just a woman problem. It's a societal problem, right? How do we view each other and the value that we give to each other in each other's lives? Because I remember reading or was I watching a video where someone was talking about how men retreat into video games a lot these days. And we talk about the lack of utility from men, right? Men aren't providing what they should be, which is boiling down, you know, I think a man's purpose to utility, which I think can be frustrating for some men, right? We don't want to be just viewed as what can we provide? We're not just a right. bank. We're not just, you know, the, the, the guy that pays the mortgage. We have emotions too, and we want to be treated and interacted with, I think. This is a broad statement. And not just viewed as what can I provide, Right. And the same thing from the female perspective. And why do we have such a divide? But anyways, this video was talking about why do men retreat to video games? And I was looking at some of the comments. Okay, so not even not even the, the discussion that was actually happening. So I think, yeah, it was a video. And some people were commenting of, you know, man, uh, this was a man saying, society, society tells us we have no use, so therefore we become that. And I think that's wow. so interesting how we are we using these video games or books and stories or something mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily, I don't want to say provide no value because there are points to a lot of different things, but do we use some things as an escape because society tells us we don't have that purpose, we don't have that use, or you know, do our loved ones see us only as a specific thing so we do that and then when we're done, we find that we don't know what to do. I don't know. It's a very complex situation, but it's very heartbreaking to think about when you feel like you're being put in this box, when we know as human beings we're so much more and can give so much more than perhaps what some people expect of us. And you don't know how to break out of the box because if you're the only one that's trying to break the mold, no one's going to support you. No one's going to help you. No one is going to see it from your standpoint to understand what you're trying to do. That's just... And that hits you deep, doesn't it? Well, and it's frustrating too, because in this story, okay, bees, we're going to give you this new purpose of, of being communication bees. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they open the window on what happens. They, nature, nature goes back to the way it was meant to be. Behavior goes back to behavior, right? You can say, don't play those video games. Don't waste your time on <sighs> this useless stuff. Go do this. But then we find ourselves slipping back into these habits, into these ruts, and that's what's just so, it's, it's, it's the myth of Sisyphus. We can push that rock up the hill, but it's going to come back the other side sometimes. There was the one bee, the one drone, who made it back to the, the messenger beehive, the, the bee millennium club. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that one survivor was like, was Vonnegut trying to say, hey, here's a shred of hope. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. somebody out there who can go against the norm and mm. change the way society works. Yeah. While it was very sad, I was so sad for that one bee. 
And then he died. I'm like, <laughs> he makes it back. I was so excited that the one made it back. And then he died. And I was like, mm-hmm. thanks, yep. Kurt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Vonnegut pulls no punches, hits you where it hurts, but allows you to kind of reevaluate and feel the writing besides yeah. just intellectualizing it, which is what I think is so beautiful about Vonnegut's yeah, writings. He, he spoke right to my emotions and had me emotionally invested in this one. And when I started it, I was like, what is what is this about? Like, what's going on here? I know there's mm-hmm. another message. And mm-hmm. I thought, am I going to get it? And oh my word. And then I'm over here researching how queen bees and drone bees and all that works. (laughs) You know, and isn't that one of the beauties of literature is what it allows us to evaluate about ourselves, what it allows us to understand about the world. Now, we brought you on this channel because I specifically wanted a female perspective on this story, right? It's it's easy to put two males in here and say like, oh, this is, you know, what's not right about society. But I think it's a little bit more entertaining and engaging when you can get, you know, the opposite view on this as well. So let's move into our subjective wrap up and ratings. We're going to leave a Vonnegut playlist down below. Where, you know, he's one of my favorite authors. So we've got tons of talks. We'll continue to have more throughout time. Leslie, hit me with your subjective ratings and wrap up. How did this story hit you? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved it at face value, just the story, because Mm -hmm. it made me curious to go learn more about bees. I would have never just woken up that day and thought, I wonder how queen bees work and drone males and, oh, wow, they actually breed their queens. They make more than one at a time. And the The girls have to fight to the death as to who gets to be the queen, and then they can be the queen for two to seven years. They only mate once in their life, and then they kill their lover by stealing his sperm, and then they just use that for the rest of their life. I would have never done that. So that, that right there, high. High on my list of things I love. I love when stories, books make me want to learn more about life. And then I love the just the symbolism of what he was trying to convey the theme of men returning from war and how we made them feel. And Oh my gosh, that just made me feel so bad. Yeah. And so that makes me think, you know what? I need to do a better effort, not just for men, for everybody. I need to make a better effort to see someone's worth and make them see that I see their worth that I have in them. So I, I, 10 out of 10, 20 out of 10, all the stars, just sprinkle all the stars. I love Kurt Vonnegut. Right. And it's worth pointing out. We don't, we're not saying for sure that Kurt's angle was the, the, right. This was meant to be allegorical of men returning from war, though there's, plenty of talks about the war and there's talks about them going foxhole to foxhole, like sneaking in these like war terms that like, you know, you could make the argument there, but it's important. I think to even know that as a backdrop to say like, this is a mirror perhaps of what some things society was experiencing, which I think is the highlight of literature. Yeah. Well, that was my subjective rating. Of course, of course. (laughs) I will go with a nine out of 10. I don't know what could be missing. I don't know what could be better. It's just, how I feel. It's all made up anyways, right? This is like, the, whose longer. line is it anyways? <laughs> it could be longer. I would have, I would have yeah. read a whole book about this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Agreed with that. That's, that's fun to get for you. I'm always wanting more. Good thing we have a gigantic book here. Oh man. I'm... Exploring on this channel. So guys, head over to Leslie's channel, show her some love, subscribe. We're going to do lots more talks and stuff like this in the future. Hit that subscribe button to join us as we post videos every Monday and Thursday. Una out. See ya.